There are four main things that can go wrong when you're forming your pancreas. Hey, it's a pretty complex process. The dorsal and ventral pancreatic primordia have to fuse perfectly, so it's not surprising that there are occasional problems. First, agenesis. Agenesis of the pancreas is very rare. It's usually associated with other malformations that are incompatible with life. Pancreas divism. This is the most common congenital anomaly of the pancreas. About 3 to 10% of people have this. The dorsal and ventral pancreatic primordia don't fuse right. And so you have the bulk of the pancreas draining through the dorsal pancreatic duct and the minor papilla. The duct of Wursang is really short and drains only a part of the head of the pancreas. It is possible that having all that pancreatic juice flowing through that little minor papilla could predispose the patient to pancreatitis. Annular pancreas. This is a band-like ring of normal pancreas that encircles the duodenum. It can present with signs and symptoms of duodenal obstruction, like gastric distension and vomiting. And lastly, ectopic pancreas. This is not as uncommon as you might think. If you look hard enough, you can find it in about 2% of routine post-mortem examinations. I don't think I looked hard enough. Autopsies were hands down my least favorite part of pathology. It wasn't so much the smell, although that was not great, or the sound of the saw cutting through the skull, or the Y incision, or the stupid Rokitansky method that we had to perform for educational purposes. Yeah, right. It was the sound the bladder makes when you pull it out from underneath the symphysis pubis. If you do it right, it makes a schlock sound that is unbearably gross. Anyway, the most common sites of ectopic pancreas are the stomach and duodenum, followed by the jejunum, Michael diverticula, and ilium. To read more, see Robbins 9E, page 883.